Willie D Live. It's Willie D, y'all. Back with another episode of information and instructions to help you navigate through this wild, crazy, beautiful world. In the studio, Faison Love. What's up, King? I'm honored, man. Man, my honor, <coughs> man. My honor to host you. I see you got your love, your blue on, you know, 34, Eric oh, Campbell, yeah, my yeah. favorite running back of oh, all yeah, time. Mine too. You know, we grew up in that era. It's man. Just, you know, Astro Cleeps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With Astro Cleeps. Man. Oh, man. I do. Turf. I do. Man. I... Did you play ball? I remember playing ball for the Hester House. This was this was a community center in uh-huh. Fifth Ward. Yeah. In the seventh grade, we were playing for the championship, and we got a chance to play at the Astrodome mm. on the turf. So imagine, fourteen yes. year old kid, yes, out there on the Astrodome turf where Earl Campbell and Warren Moon plays. Listen, we did that in San Diego at the Jack Murphy. They yeah. get all the kids who go to the championship. They play um. I think he played 20 minutes. The game was so short. But, yeah, Jack Murphy is the original um, San Diego Stadium. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So my neighborhood is Marcus Allen, uh, Reggie Bush, Terrell Davis, Ricky Williams. Oh, Ricky yeah. Williams. Damn. Uh-huh. We, got, we got a hell of a um, running back. But football is our thing that they go. Yeah. Oh yeah. We we I think we leading in Heisman Trophy winners. But you're originally from Cuba. You was born, born in Cuba, there, but raised in San Diego. Born in Cuba, yeah. ra- raised in San Anton- San, San, San Diego. Diego, and Diego. then and then Newark, New Jersey. That was first, really. Newark, Cuba, New Jersey. Newark. San so Diego. how old are you when you hit when you touch down in Newark? I was a baby. And then San Diego. We moved to San Diego. 73? Yeah, 73. So you by five? Yeah, 73. Because my father was in the Navy. And when I moved, when I came to San Diego, I came by myself on a plane. My mother and my father were already there. I came on a plane. I remember riding a plane. That now, who age. put you on a plane? My uncle. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my uncle Jerry and Aunt Sandra from the, in New York. Now, you're too young to be scared, of course. You probably was too young. Listen, I have pictures of me on, um, what was it, uh, Pan, Am, Pan Am, Pan Am, with a little thing that says Pan Am, eating a hot dog and chocolate milk. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they, they thought I was, Rod- back then there was a kid named Rodney Alley Whippy. Right. Who was on fire, and I looked right. just like him. Yeah. So it's Rodney Alley Whippy. I remember when no. <laughs> it's Rodney Alley Whippy. No. But um, excuse me. Yeah, I remember. Um, I remember that because the hot dogs. And I remember the picture. I remember my uncle putting me up. back then. You can walk up to the gate, and. You know, there wasn't no, you know, you you, park, you leave your car running in the white zone. Right. <laughs> and I'm taking my nephew to the thing. Just him, yeah, get on the plane. There wasn't no IDs. Right. Looking through your ass. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, you could pull up right there on the curb in, in the limo and, and get oh, out and all that kind of stuff. I remember landing in San Diego for the first time. And, um... I remember smelling, t- it was smelled so clean. <laughs> it's like, Mom, it smells so clean. Why is it so clean? It smelled like tires. So, so Newark didn't smell clean? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Vinny. <laughs> What's up, Trench? What's up with you guys, they man? They know how I smell. <laughs> yeah. But um, in Newark was, you know, I remember uh, riding the train on my uncle. And... Take going over to Newark, to New York, and seeing it was rough. The train was rough. It was dirty. I mean, dirty. <laughs> I thought I thought people was pissing. Excuse me, in the bathroom in the corner, but that's where the conductor was. Is that, is that a bath? It used to be a bathroom, I think. 
I remember when people were going, I'm like, they were going there. And my uncle said, don't you move nowhere. Stay your, stay your ass right here. It was, it was bad. Wow. IRT, six train. So, so, so at what point, like, what, what, what's it like growing up in your, in your household? Oh, my God. Hmm. First of all, we spoiled. <laughs> Me and my sister. My sister was born seventy two in San Diego. And y'all were military brats. Yeah, my father was in on, on a Kitty Navy. Hawk. Yeah, on the Navy. The Navy yeah, right. Yeah. Kitty Hawk, and he retired on the Bon Bon Richard. Um, that's what brought us to San Diego. But everybody in San Diego was from the Navy. Uh, I mean, no, not the Navy, but the military. Um, Marines, Navy, Army, everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody. There were sea boxes everywhere. Did y'all live on a base or off the no. base? No, we lived uh, in the neighborhood, regular neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure they got a loan from the, um, VHA loans or whatever it was. So, um, yeah. What you asked me, Lord? My um, growing up my, with my father, my mother, I grew up yeah, with my yeah, mother yeah. and father. What, yeah, what, what what was that like? You know, like rearing a young Faison. Um, and did they call you Faison, or did they call you oh, by your? Did they call you Langston? No, yeah. <laughs> I had all <laughs> all kind of names. Um, this <laughs> this dude in the neighborhood car, we Myron Mitchell called me um, Poke Chop. <laughs> Cause I always have a poke chop sound just walk down poke chop, but um yeah my my father uh, called me Tank I'm Tank at the house okay Tanky um my father passed too so about a year ago mm, so I can do this man that was it yeah but yeah so strict house Papa didn't take no mess at all. Yeah. You want to join the gang? Okay, you got to whoop my ass first. Huh. You whoop my ass, you can join the gang. Because this is a gang right here. My neighborhood <laughs> back then was a set. Early set. So we was Bunny Boys. You know what I'm saying? Man, how y'all come up with the name Bunny Boys? Man, hey, boy. How y'all going to be gangsters and be bunnies? Let me tell you something, boy. <laughs> Play boy. <laughs> Let me tell you something, boy. Uptown. Let me tell you something. You don't want to mess with them Bunny Boys. Bunny boys. Oh man, listen to okay. me. Let me tell you something, man. Treacherous. And he was like, nah. You gotta have to whip my ass first. <laughs> so that was the end of your game career? Yeah, that was pretty much like I was still, you know, you know he told his whole theory was don't ever do a bunch of anything with a bunch of anybody. So my father had his time in the streets. Him, mm -hmm. his brother, his two brothers, they was notorious in New York and Savannah, Georgia. They was notorious. Um, he was like, don't ever do anything with a bunch of niggas. <laughs> I know you don't like that word, mm -hmm. but that's what he was saying. And um, ever. So if you're going to be in a gang, you better be in a gang by yourself. But all these people we grew up with, you know, there was... The gangs in California really came from football, San Diego. Now, how did that happen? So say like you playing over in so-and-so, that's your neighborhood, and we get together, we got another neighborhood. We lose, we going to fight. <laughs> we going to meet up at the Sweetwater, and we going to fight. Or say like um, they have Veep um, busing. So we go to another school, that's another, that's another set. Lincoln, Morris, um, the East, you know, we're going to fight. It's pretty, you know, it's, but that's where it really came, you know. When did this comedy thing strike you? Like, where did you get into comedy, man? What, what sparked that? I think it was um, not being able to go full gang mode, and them talking, and them having to defend myself. Oh, you can't go up to the park? Uh, oh, fuck you. <laughs> you know, go, you know, we would stay out on, 
night long under the the light talking shit. You know, it was like <laughs> talking mama jokes. Mm-hmm. And that shit carry on to um school. We be I would be waiting under the flagpole when you get you get to school and that's where everybody come in and I just be giving it to them. Wow, wow, wow. But if you give it to somebody too good, you gotta fight. Right. <laughs> So I was I was kind of always in trouble like that, but is um, it is it true that you did your first stand up at fifteen? Fourteen. Really? Yeah. And what was that? It was at the comedy store in La Jolla. The comedy store? Yeah. 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 That's where I met Polly Shore and what? Oh man, Damon Wayans. Um, a scale of one ten, what'd you do? How 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 well did you think you did? I probably sucked, but I was good enough for them to be like, oh. So Polly Shore, Damon Wayans. Damon Wayans was on fire. Um, Who else? Uh, Damon Wayans had his hair back then. That's how far. Oh wow! Um, I was impressed by uh, Sam Kinnison. Sam, Sam Kinnison. Kin- I know, I know the name. I gotta say, so big time white guy. Um, Sam Kinnison would come down and do a weekend and. Lines be everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. Love cocaine. <laughs> 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 he asked me one day, uh, "Hey, can you get you, you know where?" I guess because I was black, you know. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> he was like, yeah. You guys, I was like, when I get back, came back, I was steady mobbing. <laughs> did, did he OD? No, no, he crashed. Actually crashed in a um, car driving going okay. through, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that dude was on fire. He oh, was hot. on fire. Funny as a motherfucker. I was... So yeah. he gave you some tips. Did he give you any professional tips? No. So you just kind of like learn by just watching? Just the, how he got out. I mean, I was like, yeah. okay, this is how he shows up and <laughs> he brushes his hair like this, mm-hmm. gets on stage and just was. It was just brilliant. I can't even. It was. If there's a rock and roll comedy, was that? Even Damon Wayans, the shit that Damon Wayans was doing back then was. I was, you know. People don't know Damon Wayans real quiet. So you know, back then you had to be real quiet and just kind of study. It wasn't just hey, I know that she did this. It's kind of you know. You look at. Uh, Robin Williams, Robin Harris. Sorry. You're looking at him, and uh, I remember I wore some red shoes uh, <laughs> to the show. And he talked so bad about my red shoes. I took them motherfuckers off. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, red boots <laughs> so with a, a little three quarter angle on them. Right. I thought I was. <laughs> I'm like, yo. <laughs> Woo! And I had an okay set. But when Robin Harris got on that stage and talked about me, looked like I dipped my feet in paint. <laughs> Man, your first movie was was Baby Kids, and you voiced uh, Robin Harris. How cool is that? <sighs> That's why I be telling people, man, it's just the journey in life. It's like you are where you're supposed to be. There are no mistakes. Like when I met Robin, nobody knew who he was. He was just a the, the comedy club was this small. <laughs> and said, you know, he had came down and oh, this guy bad. And it was really hard to do places like the comedy store. Like I was doing the comedy store, but I was doing what they call open night. Um, and he wasn't doing. He was doing all these little black rooms, uh, the Red Onion, and all that. So he thought I was funny. It was like, you need to come over up to LA and, you know, <clears throat> and um, do the comedy act. So I did a comedy act one night, the first night, and I bombed. And um, the guy who produced it, Michael Williams, who's still a friend of mine today, he says, man, they just want to be entertained, Faison. Because he saw I was, I was defeated. He saw me like, you know, bombing at a comedy club 
and walking out and be, people looking at you like, ah. <laughs> yeah, boy, I saw you on stage. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ah. Just think about it. Mo- the most beautiful woman in the world just saw you bomb and she, she didn't even look at you. She's like, ah. <laughs> so, so, so how'd you get through that? Michael Williams told me, because he saw the look on my face, and um, he goes, they just want to be entertained. So I took it there instead of heavy, and you know, because Eddie Murphy was the man at the time. And, um, so the next day, I came back, and destroyed. <laughs> I remember the joke was a Shaka Zulu. I said, y'all, y'all don't know me now, but I got a movie out right now called Shaka Zulu. And people went, well, yeah, I'm, I'm the black dude with a spear. <laughs> 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 and from then on, they was, you know, and then the first person is, God damn it, that goddamn Shaka Zulu. <laughs> Robin was calling me Shaka Zulu. That goddamn Shaka Zulu. <laughs> <clears throat> So <laughs> that's that's where it really came from. It's like you know, it's nothing wrong with failing. If you don't go on again and try, then failing makes makes you strong. Yeah, makes you learn. Especially with stand up. That's why these stand up now they suck because they just looking at the camera. Going, blah, 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 blah. There's no. <laughs> there's not a crowd going there's no woman going nigga please you know what I'm saying who who among these social media comedians today do you think has a real career in stand up oh I would say none none <laughs> who do you like oh wow um man what's this guy name uh, see um see yeah, I can't think of his name right now, but I know. Uh, but I, 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 I like dude. He, he's good. If, if I, if I told, you, told you who he was, I think you, I think you know him because he's making some waves. And, but, but, I, but I haven't seen him do stand up. You, you, I haven't you seen won't. him do stand up. You won't. Yeah. Um, stand up is an art. Yeah. It's really an art. People think they can rap till they get in that booth. Mm-hmm. All right, let's double it up. Double it up. We mean double it up. I thought I was done. Oh no, no. We, this is the art of recording. Mm-hmm. You know, oh nah, you flat right there. I'm flat. Now they think because they pick up the phone and do it, it's done. It's layers to this. <laughs> it's layers to it. They're so obsessed about getting famous and not getting good. Hmm. Well, the fame comes rapidly. Fame. Well, for them, for them, right, right. people go, "Oh, that's the guy to stick the banana up his ass." But you understand, when you're really doing this for the love of it, it's, it comes. It comes when it comes. When it when you when you become that craftsman, like I remember. Jamie Foxx getting on stage for the first time. We in San Diego. You check everybody out. Well, Jamie is a natural singer. Comedy a second. He's a he's a musician. And he gets on stage and he starts doing this thing with his throat. I'm like, he's brilliant. <laughs> He's I mean the what he was he was taking <clears throat> he's talking about fucking and <laughs> being excited or something, but using his voice and using his his heartbeat or whatever and, and killing it. Now this is probably the first time he's on stage. Killing it. Then we go to, six months later. He had this joke that I was, oh my God. His mama, his grandmama thinks everybody got AIDS. I remember that joke. <laughs> I remember that joke. That joke, Jamie told 
at Birdland. Remember Birdland in, in Long Beach? In Long Beach? Yes. Yeah, yes. man. I used to fly. When I first started making money, I used to fly to L.A. on the weekends. Whenever I wasn't on the road, Yeah, I would fly to L.A. and go to Birdland on That's, the weekend. I will, are you, I'll be in the just, just to watch the comedy show. It was that good. D.L. was hosting. T.K. started him T.K. Host. was there. Because T.K. T.K. started <laughs> yeah. that room. Yeah, I yeah. heard. I heard. Oh, no, he did. But, yeah, yeah, but by the... But, by the time I started going, DL was hosting. TK would get on stage. Mm-hmm. You know, Jamie was there. Yes. Uh, like uh, Robin Harris film recorded his album in that room. Yeah. Um, DL is hosting and brings up Robin. If you listen to the tape. Yeah. Yeah. So man, yeah, you 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 that yeah was, you that was some a great. great that was a great comedy club. Oh my in fact, God. it's considered the last great black comedy club in L.A. Well, the Comedy Act and that one, yes. Is the Comedy Act still open? No, no. Because I think um, Ricky Harris opened Birdland later, like in 2000, again. Because like you said. Who opened it? Ricky Harris. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was um he was doing a night there, mm. and people were going down there, and um, I went down there just for old time sakes, like wow. Um, but, but you couldn't recapture that magic. No, man. you can't do that. No, no. That, Berlin was so good that the hecklers could have got five minutes. <laughs> You can get a heckler five minutes, man. A heckler going to get you. He go, he can get, the heckler can Listen get you a good me. five minutes. If you couldn't get a heckler down with that first, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. your mama so old. Yeah. Yeah, but now that's what I'm saying. These kids, they don't know that. Uh-huh. All they know is the one-way conversation with the phone. You see what I'm saying? But somebody from, like, back then who... Comedy act. Um, we had another one called the Red Onion. The um, oh man, there's so many. Houston. Um, they had a place in Houston we went to, but it was like uh, it was mirrors. <laughs> I just remember mirrors. <laughs> so what year? This was. I will tell you what it was. This was. Ninety-two, hip hop comedy spot. <laughs> yeah, Rashawn, Rashawn, Rashawn McDonald yep. and, and David Rashawn. Yep, and Rashawn was so funny. Was Rashawn McDonald was the writer on Parenthood, right? And Which you uh, started? in? Yes, and he brought me out here. To do the round in eighty seven, no, no, ninety nineteen ninety seven, nineteen ninety seven, ninety ninety six, one ninety six, I think. And with so many bad women, I couldn't focus. Mm-hmm. It was just like. Salute to the ladies of Houston. Oh, oh yeah, baby. We got them. We got them. We got them. We got them. I was like, oh. yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I couldn't focus. Yeah. I was like, Whoa. so yeah, I had, I had, um, oh my God. It was, it was amazing. It, it's, you know, like you said, I can remember those dates and times of certain clubs and where you was, but nowadays it's not. It's a whole different game. It's a whole different thing. It's a whole. Um, I had to fall in love with it again because I was like, they're not doing what I'm doing. They're doing a banana and ass. You see what I'm saying? There's a difference between a clown and a comedian. Hmm. A clown puts a banana in his ass. The comedian talked him into doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You see what I'm saying? So people thought I was rough on Monique 
for her special. But I know I'm, I know Monique. I know she's funny. I know she she be smart. But because the bar is so low, that's what you're doing, baby. <laughs> You'll say baby not baby is not a joke. <laughs> baby is not a storyline. It's not a joke either. <coughs> so what's happening is this is a classic comedy just going like this. So what so where you what do you rank that Monique special? With with the dirt? <laughs> the worst. It's the worst. The worst. Scale of one to ten. It's not even a one. Wow. It's not even a one. It's not even a 0. 0.0. Wow. What would you rate it? Um, I wouldn't go that low. I wouldn't go that low. I, I think... Uh, well, let me ask you the best special you ever see. The best special I've ever seen. And I already know what you're going to say. Well, it could be. I don't know if I can just say it, it's that, but it, I, <coughs> some of the I, I would say a, a few of the best I've seen was Raw, mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Pryce, where he did the dog thing. I already the, knew you. Where was he made the dogs that. talk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Well, they were grown. They, they, it wasn't just about numbers. It was groundbreaking in the way they told the stories. Uh, That's what's and, and Dave Chappelle's, um, Dave Chappelle's, um, what was the name of that last special? Sticks and Stones. Sticks and Ooh, man, brilliant. I thought so, too. Brilliant. It's and the way, it's, the, it's not jokes. It's storytelling. It's the way they tell the stories, and it's the way that the, you make people think of things that they don't normally think of. You know, like Very good. like a lot of people can just get on stage and vent and and say somebody is ugly or fat or skinny or anorexic or whatever, and people go ha 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 ha. But the brilliance in a comedian to me is when they can exploit the angle. See, that's angles and it's levels, like you say, it's levels to this shit. It's POV. Yeah. Have you ever heard of George Carlin? Of absolutely, <clears throat> you ever see him break down the, Brilliant. the theory of God? Yes. yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes, it's like, and that's what you're saying with Dave Chappelle. And I was like, I was hard on Dave Chappelle because people were telling him to call him the king and the the, the master of. I'm like, what what nigga y'all talking about? Because I <laughs> I remember Dave Chappelle, very nice guy, and then he came out with Sticks and Stones. I was like, ah. Now that was cold blooded. Mm -hmm. That was cold blooded. Um, the thing he did on Saturday Night Live when they was all messing with him, mm -hmm. I was like, okay. You, you know the thing about Dave, what I what I respect so much is mm -hmm. I really do understand how hard it is to write comedy. Like to actually do comedy, like I'm talking about a special. I'm not just talking about getting on stage and having a good night. I'm talking about getting on that stage and doing a one hour set where you banging it and you giving people a new experience. And yes. Dave has one of the quickest turnarounds I've ever seen, where he's bringing you different concepts, different stories, like. This 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 special three four months later, bam! When most comp comedians, I mean, if they do a special, they're gonna run that special. They <coughs> might do a special every three four five years or something. No, uh, Dave writes a lot. You gotta think how many specials think Bridget Pryor had? Probably three. I mean, Eddie Murphy. About two. Bill Cosby. Maybe three, four. Mm, one. I mean, then there's the ones he just recently did, but 
for the ones he did, which is probably just really one. The one Daddy wants to play a birthday cake. <laughs> These are masterpieces. Mm-hmm. A, a thesis of your life, of your work. So if you have 18 theses, <laughs> Chris Rock has really mastered the special. They always, they always go over him, but Chris Rock's a cold, cold man. What do you think about his last special? I think it was brilliant because he was... He, Selective outrage. He, uh, see, people don't understand. The special was one thing, but what he did is break the bar. Now it's a bar. Can you do it live? Can you do it live? It is extra points, Ron. What? That's extra points. Yes, live. We're doing this yeah. live. We're not editing. We're not, you know, oh, man, I messed that joke up. He messed the joke up mm-hmm. and kept it moving and came back. That's what he did. That's what the average he, people, the average person didn't even catch it. Exactly. But I caught it. It was like uh, three, three quarters into it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He had a lot on his mind. But it wasn't so much, <clears throat> everybody thought it was about the Will Smith thing. No, he used that to break it live. When is what is you gonna do? What are you gonna do live with no uh, what they call it a net? You know what his net was? I mean, uh, um, what's that thing in the in the um, circus when you trampoline? No, when you, if you fall off, you have a, a safety net. Safety net. net. Yeah. You know what his safety net was? Good night, thank you, goodbye. Because you can mess up the whole time. The whole time. Eddie Murphy's first Raw, uh, Robert Townsend directed, he said it was horrible. It was horrible. He didn't connect with the crowd. He was all fancy. I think Keenan or somebody told him to get his get his ass, get, get ready. I think Keenan was like, yo, go in there. And the second one is he went in there and destroyed it. Robert Townsend directed Raw? Yeah. Man, shouts out to Robert Townsend, man. Robert, Fuck man, Robert he, Townsend. I'm nah, man, that dude, that dude is something else, man. No, he's Robert, a, listen, me and Robert. He's a beast, man. Robert and I are, I love Robert. But I love Robert. I taught, I learned a lot from Robert. But he disappointed me with the whole, a lot of people did with the whole Bill Cosby shit. Yeah, you were one of the few people that that rode for Bill Cosby. Why'd you do that? Because I, I, I when Bill, when Michael Jackson came around, Michael Jackson first, uh, they invited me to the house, mm-hmm. and I said something silly to the people like, "Any fucking children?" And then I sat back and I was like, "That was so disrespectful," because I saw his mother, I saw his father. And the black, they not going to. They invited you to Michael Jackson's yeah. house? Yeah, Chris Tucker was hanging out with Michael Jackson. Okay. And um, uh, Eddie Griffin. And you said this to who? It was one of the ladies. Um, hey, Michael Jackson wants you to come to the house. Like, Shh. Any fucking children? You said that to her. Yeah. Not nobody else. Nobody else. Okay. I'm thinking. I could have. But I remember saying it to um, Mary Ann who worked there. And she's like, Face, I can't believe you said that. I'm like, you don't see this shit? I was being just like, but then, I've been in trouble a lot with the law. And I saw Michael Jackson show up late in pajamas. Ain't nobody guilty show up in pajamas to court late. They would take you right there. Like, come on. You will figure this out. You you will figure this out later. But why you standing behind? Right? He got there. He danced on the car. I was like, that don't look like a, a guilty man. When I get to court and I'm guilty, I'm there eight hours before. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking. About. I damn sure do. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you talking to people in the hallway? Hey, uh, what's the judge like, y'all? Uh, 
Um, is the prosecutor, is he cool? <laughs> <laughs> he just... <laughs> In pajamas, yeah. with all this, fifteen cases on his shoulders. I said that man is not guilty. Then he won. I said, ah, oh. ah, I owe him. I owe them a apology. This is all bullshit. That's like, this is all bullshit. Every black man is guilty. <laughs> Fast forward to Bill Cosby. Wait a minute. Did you ever get around to apologizing to Mike? No. You know what happened. Mm -hmm. But I, I apologized to his brother. I met his brothers who lived around the corner from me, who knew where I lived. We were doing a time during a cruise. And I opened for them. And we had so much fun, and they treated me like I was one of the brothers. And I was like, there's no way these dudes would let because you, Because they were like real men, like real brothers. Like, I, I bet you that all of them done had hands on Michael Jackson. Like, get your bitch ass over here. I, I was like, they done, I done socked them up. I know it, being a brother. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I think the world took the Michael Jackson entertainer and thought that was Michael Jackson. He's a total two different people. You see what I'm saying? Michael Jackson, the Michael Jackson is a real black man. That makes sense? Absolutely. But there was the entertainer. Here's my monkeys. <laughs> this is Bill Cosby, same thing. Um, his son was murdered. I was like, wow, they kind of swept that under the cover. No one's ever been murdered over there. It's around the corner from where I used to live. <clears throat> then this whole thing, but... He's raping women in 1643. What? <laughs> what? During the disco era? The cocaine era? This is what I know. I started investigating. Whenever a woman is raped, they can go to the police, and the police makes the whole body evidence you become evidence your uterus they do a test all this test they collect samples all that stuff now all they gotta do is match it up but these women didn't call the police they called an attorney years down the line Years. Well, their supporters would say that they mm -hmm. only waited that long because mm -hmm. it took that long for them to be brave, become brave enough to, to come forward. Because Bill Cosby was such a powerful player in Hollywood. They couldn't do it. They, they just, you, they just, you can't even say it with a straight face. I'm just saying, this is what they said. <laughs> you can't say it with a straight face. That was the story. This happened in the 60s. A black man can't even look at a white woman. You ever heard of Emmett Till? And kill him. What, you, what was they scared of? The eye spy was going to get cut off? I'll tell you like this, bro. That's why I didn't believe it. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't believe it because, you know, there's very few things more defendable to... Mm -hmm. American, the American judicial system than white woman's tears. Right. And I don't give a fuck how powerful a black man is. Right, right. He, he, he right. don't stand a chance None. against a white woman's tears. None. 
And so, yeah, they would have brought him down. It don't. It didn't matter how big he was. That they they would have brought him down. And I and I looked at that like. It looked like a money grab to me, and it, then you know, and then you have people say, "Well, well, well, well." Everybody can't be lying. Well, you know, remember that little slavery thing? Woo! I say the same thing. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Everybody could be lying. Everybody can know? be lying. Everybody can be lying. You know, and here's why I thought that Mike didn't do it. Mm. Obviously, you know, I'm looking at Mike through the lens of society as I've been trained yes. to view men. Yes. And that is that you don't trust men mm. with children. Right. I've been trained to not trust yes. men with children. Yes. Like most of us have. And so if you see a man lying in bed with children, right. especially who are not his, right. then you tend to think that's a problem when and they're eating ice cream. And, you know, what people don't understand about Mike is that Mike was not like the rest of us. He, no. he's, he, he wasn't like most of us. Mike really, Mike loved human beings. He had an affection for human beings. Right. He was so, he was so infatuated with children mm. that he was kind of childlike himself because he had his childhood robbed of him. Mike didn't move like the average human being, period. He didn't and have to. On, on any level, he didn't, he didn't move like the average human being. So Mike didn't see anything wrong with eating ice cream in the bed with little children. Right. He didn't see anything wrong with it because he looked at his actions as pure and innocent. And he looked at those kids as pure and innocent. And I do believe that Mike loved children so much that he would never hurt a child. Mm. He, Mike loved human beings so much that he would never hurt a human being. Right. So this is why I felt like he was innocent. Also, uh, for those who won't, who, who will deject that argument or reject that argument, I say, well, what about the, le the, legalities, the legalities of it, right? When's the last time the FBI has thoroughly investigated anybody, mm. thoroughly investigated anybody for months or years at a time. Right. And then they also had accusers. They take them to trial and then a person beat the charges. You know, like, and when you talk about the payoff, the payoff is that, man, you don't understand. Some, you're trying to go on with your life. You're not trying to walk into the courtroom. Nobody trying to go to court. You're not trying to go to week. court. You're not trying to be dealing dealing with all with all of that stuff. It's, it's easier to write a check. Now, me on the other hand, I spend a million dollars to, to make sure a motherfucker don't get five thousand. I, I, I ain't because I be looking at. <laughs> oh, that's I what look it at, is. I look at it like. That's you ain't getting over on me. You not. I ain't finna give you a and jack. And that's what it is. And, and 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 the reason why is because if you pay somebody one time, if mm -hmm. you if you stroke a check one time, everybody gonna find out. Yeah. And they gonna oh he writing checks. Well let me get my let me let me put my little old beard that's in. That's the game. Yeah. That's the game. That's the me too game. That's the me too game. How does Phase on Love move around in this me too game? I don't. I tag it like How this. How do you deal with it? Bro, you on stage? You doing your thing? You see her? She laughing? She got a special laugh though. It's she true. she and she she special. <laughs> it's a special laugh, isn't it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She got that laugh, and she looking, and she watch, and you clock, and you look back, and every time you look, she's staring. All right, it's over. The show is over, mm -hmm. and she right there. If I didn't fuck her 10 years ago, I ain't fucking her now. So you ain't taking advantage of none of this. You can't. None of this celebrity that you have now. Listen to me. Whenever you get sued like that, it's like, what the fuck? It takes you to an, a whole nother. Somebody gonna get shot. Who they, do they know who they fucking with? <laughs> <laughs> do they really know who they, are they playing games <clears throat> because you think did I do anything like the conversation we have earlier I remember those times I listen I remember women showing up to my house with just some uh, uh, a fog of 
a fall coat and some stilettos. Right? And there was no question. There was no question. The only question was, is she trying to set me up for a robbery? But like, I know her. Yeah, that's the girl that was booted call. But now it's it's being set up to where you, like I said, Irvin. I'm like, why isn't everybody on that? Because he literally went into the, the the hotel, shook some hands, talked to the girl, not even hugged her. And he's got to get out of here. And it's Michael Irvin. Yes. Former Dallas Cowboys wide receiver. <laughs> you, don't, you don't feel him. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you ain't saying that. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that, did this happen in Dallas? In Phoenix, at the Super Bowl. In Phoenix. Yeah. So the thing is, is that, like, so when something like that happens and somebody makes a false, a false accusation, there's no penalties, bro. That's, That's what, what pisses me, me off. off. It's no penalty That's what pisses for me off. destroying somebody's life. Yeah, yeah. Because once, even if you didn't do it, right. just an accusation yes. alone, alone, you can never take that off your record. Forever, his name is going to be mentioned with being accused of sexual assault. Yes. And for some people, especially these internet trolls, yeah, they, you say something they don't like, oh, shit, a rapist. Yeah. And you can't get your hands on them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So well, that's... you actually could get your hands on them if you really want to get your hands on them. <laughs> you can get your hands on them, but... Hey, listen. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Set up a trap. <coughs> I'll be over here at 5.30 if you like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's the problem. Is like there's, there's no penalty for the for the, for that, because nothing gets worked out in court. What they what they want to do is let's mediate. Mediate what? It ain't if you're guilty or not. It's what you want to mediate? What you want to mediate for? Right. Like, Get to the bag. To the bag. Yeah. They never call the police. They call it court. You know, and back back to Bill Cosby case, the dude who accused him of a rape, I mean, the, the woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's some new case. <laughs> you don't get Bill a new case. <laughs> I'm going to keep it a bug, dog. You know, I ain't afraid to say. I thought it was a dude when I first saw him. I, was like, I thought it Bill's was a dude. eyes really going that bad? I'm like, what is Homeboy talking about. But here's the, here's the thing why that why his testimony should have never I mean her testimony should have never been used. <laughs> Say man, the dude took the money. I mean the girl took the money. <laughs> she took the money. Took the money and brought and, and she took the money and agreed to not bring charges in the future. And then turned around and helped him get locked up. She took the money, went back on her word, and then it's amazing how when a lie benefits the prosecution, mm -hmm. it can be told and the it can be told and expected to be the truth now. Yeah. But when it doesn't benefit the prosecution, then your word it's no good. Right. You can't believe this person. They lied once. They'll lie again. How could you believe her? That's the part right there that got me. And, you know, obviously, Bill Cosby is not a saint. No, None of us, none of us are. But you got to really think about, man, going down that rabbit hole of being able to charge a person for, you know, a rape that you say took place. There's See, no evidence. And, 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 and I've heard some people say, well, you know, uh, slavery happened a uh, hundred and something years ago and, you know, you guys keep bringing that up. Well, we, that's documented. We know that that happened. That, that, ain't, that ain't somebody's... Right. That ain't somebody just saying, I think that happened. Right. I believe it happened. Right. Uh, or that happened to me and there's no proof. This right. is... That's, doc, that's documented. Right. These cases of these women... 
saying that Bill Cosby did this and did that to him is not documented. No. So. And then they, re, they said, oh, those are technicality. They don't let black men out of jail on, that quick. They wait years. 40 years. Ah! What do you think about R. Kelly? I don't know what to think because I'm going to tell you the truth. If R. Kelly did all that stuff, he should be, the dead jail cells should be packed. You know how many people work with? Starting off with the parents. With the parents. Who delivered them to, to him. I was looking at the thing the other day going, maybe I'm missing something. And the girl, 48 years old, they talking about, where's our baby? What? Where's your baby? This girl, 30-something years old. One girl says he's a monster. Oh, he's a monster. He, I was. I, she had to break down and stop. Then she said, so my second kid, your second kid. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. So you, she broke up from R. Kelly, fucked some college dude, had two kids, then went back to R. Kelly. I'm lost. If this is a monster, why you didn't stay with the college motherfucker you got two kids with? That's why R. Kelly's case is going to be reversed. R. R. Kelly, R. Kelly, believe it or not, R. Kelly is going to beat those charges. Uh, yeah. Because because here's the thing. They overcharged him. Not only they only charged him, charge him with number one, Rico <clears throat> and trafficking. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the overcharge. I'm not I'm not saying that he didn't do anything with minors. I'm not saying that. I don't know. I'm saying they overcharged him with that Rico thing, mm. that Rico act. That's that's an overcharge. Rico and kidnapping. That man ain't kidnapping nobody. Man out on tour. <laughs> you can't leave. You going up to the grocery store. Right. By they, yourself. Right. You, 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 they said they was they was being kidnapped and they was at the mall. <laughs> so which one is it? Yeah, they, they kidnap at the mall, at the grocery stores, you they, know, at the police station. <laughs> this girl told me, no, he's a celebrity. And he has, let, let me tell you something. But a pimp told me. I'm going to say it like the pimp told me. A bitch, you can't make a bitch do nothing she don't want to do. Hmm. I ain't making her sell this money, the pussy. She want to sell it and give it to me. That makes sense. Walk up to a woman and try to make her do something she don't want to do. Hmm. There's nothing in the world that you can make a woman do. Ask Adam and Eve. <laughs> That's the first story. That's the first story. There's nothing you can make a woman do. She going to do, when a woman meets you, she knows she going to fuck you. It ain't nothing you did that impressed her. All you can do is talk yourself out of the pussy. Huh. But she's, she's, oh yeah, he's getting it. Oh yeah, he's getting it. <laughs> that reminds me, one time, me and my, me and my cousin, Larry R.I.P., <laughs> we meet these girls, we go to the, go to the mall, uh, to the Cheesecake Factory to eat. Mm -hmm. I got my girl already. She's secured. Right. But she brings a friend. Right. Now, Larry is a country boy. <laughs> and he talked like a country boy. Right. But, you know, he was a handsome fella. Uh -huh. You know, a uh, hard worker. Right. This girl was a little bit more cosmopolitan, you right. know. But, right. you know, she was she didn't try these other guys. She's really just at the point, she got her own money. She's really at a point where she just want a good guy. Right. Larry's a good guy. Right. But he can overtalk himself. <laughs> so I told him, I said, man, follow my lead. <laughs> I said, you already in, man. You already halfway there. You my cousin, man. She know I'm a good, cool dude. She said, I'm going to introduce her to, to a cool dude. I said, you already halfway there, bro. All you got to do is don't hardly say nothing. That's right. I say, don't hardly say nothing. Do not lead any conversation. That's right. Do That's not lead. <laughs> What are you talking about politics? <laughs> Man, we sitting there, everything going good for the, the first good 30 minutes we in. We 30 minutes in. I'm like, boy, you finna get the number of points home. Because yeah. she like, oh, he quiet. Oh, yeah. okay, mysterious. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
boy, good. We <laughs> we win it, man. We win it. We good by good. We get in about a good 35, 40 minutes. Here you go. He start talking. And and each time, you know how somebody says something, you cringe and you want to tap them, <laughs> but you're too far away from them. <laughs> it's over. Ah! Well, Man, Larry tried to get that girl phone number, man, before we left. She was like, <laughs> nah. She was like, <laughs> two ways, best two ways to talk to you about a pussy. Talk. Just talk. I'm a, you know, the government. Or tell a woman you love her. <laughs> <laughs> that quick. <laughs> Just, you know, I think I love you. <laughs> well, they can actually get you some if you've already been getting it. No, 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 not, not, not in the beginning. In the beginning, if you tell a woman you love her, she gone. Oh, that's true. Yeah, she gone. It's too fast. Yeah. Oh man, it's gone. What's the beginning? What's too fast to say I love you? We the first thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> What's a reasonable time? What's a reasonable time? Is if you've dated oh. a woman, you say, "Okay, I love you, baby." You, a woman's not going to accept that to about. I say a year. A year? Mm-hmm. About a year. A good, she ain't gonna believe it till after a year. Women really go on what you've been doing and how she's been treating her. That's how they really, a woman who, how you treat her, how you make her feel. And she gonna be like, you already done told her in so many ways. You know, hey, I picked your mom up. People, you know, brother thing is all about money. It has nothing to do with money. Because a lot of these women is broke, hitting, breaking off the, with no money. It's just how you make her feel. So you already, if you already already there with, hey, I, you know, I know your mother's birthday is tomorrow, so I went and got a little cake and, you know, I dropped it off. Don't tell her I did it. Just, that, that, ugh, ugh. You know what I'm saying? Let me see what me and this girl have on my birthday. <laughs> It's some little. It's that little stuff. It ain't the you know. Uh, it's the little stuff that you do that 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 makes them. Because it's already telling them they want to tell you, but they so gun shy, and then when you finally say it, they 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 know it. They're already in sync. But if you meet a girl, she's oh, I think I love you. What's my last name? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's the legs. <laughs> now you now you talked about women, uh, men leading with their wallet, right? Mm-hmm. That's a very good point because if you lead with your wallet, she'll never respect you. Never. Never, ever, 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 ever respect you. Now, but here's the thing about people like you and me and, mm-hmm. you know, just celebrities, period. Uh, people with money. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, we don't really know if a woman is for us or just trying to get what they can get. Never. And in order for us to find out that, we have to lose everything. That's the best way. In order for us to really, really know, we have to lose everything. So how? So having said that, knowing that we still love being with women, we like the affection, the touch, and company of a woman. How do we navigate that and not lose all of our money? Well, what, how, how do we find out without losing our money? I'll we'll tell you something funny. I, and I hope you understand what um, I know you will, but I've had my first kid, my daughter. <clears throat> stays with her mother. Sometimes she stays with me. She's three, she'll be four in May. She goes home. It's my only kid. So last year I had take the year off. I'm playing my daughter. We doing all kind of stuff. Tea parties. And, and um, she's spoiled. But not spoiled. 
She's spoiled. Not spoiled riding, but spoiled. She's spoiled riding. She's spoiled riding. She's spoiled riding. Oh, she, I was trying to help her, but no, no she's spoiled good. riding. I mean, because my mama was. <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> Archie. Archie. So okay. Archie spoiled riding. Is that that's not her first name? Yeah. Y'all named your daughter. I did. You named your daughter Archie. Archie after who? Archie Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> Archie Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> Archie. Is that after somebody or what? No, I just was. It's one of the anonymous names for. You put on a door, and you, you know you don't know who you come to see. And I think she's gonna be really smart and running stuff because she's extremely smart. So I had to fight for that name because her mama named tried to name her Amora. I said like, no, that's a strip name. That's a strip name. She yeah, I can. I guess I do like Archie. <laughs> yeah, I was like no, Amora, no. Love, love, no. No. So, Archie comes to my house. We, you know, sit here. We have fun. She goes back to her mom's. And she goes, Mom, my handy guy, I call her right now. Daddy's rich. <laughs> her mother says, why do you say that? Daddy's rich and I'm rich. My sisters and brothers are poor. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> I've never had a conversation about money. We talking about Peppy Pig and uh, old doodles. We have, you know, we watch cartoons and she paints and all that stuff. We've never. She knows. A woman knows when they've been taken care of without showing money. I've never showed my daughter a dollar. What she need a dollar for? But she knows, Daddy, what's that? I want a pink, I want a pink bear. Amazon. Pink bear. Come to your house. Boom. She wakes up, there's a pink bear. I have to stop that. My daughter thinks I'm rich. <laughs> she tell her kids her she's rich. I'm like, well, it depends on what neighborhood you. <laughs> but how do you meet a woman today in the Me Too era? That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's how you treat her without the other stuff. My daughter came up with this. So if you want me to woman, I don't, I don't drive no Rolls Royces and shit. I'll come up in an old raggedy truck. Right? Yeah, but she know you got it, though. I don't give a fuck about all that shit. You, you come in and know that San the Sun shit all you want to, to me. but she know you got well, it, listen baby. To me. You pull up in that raggedy truck, and that's going to tell you. We riding this, and it's a nice truck now, but it's a 67. Man, that ain't a good example. Listen to me. Listen you to got me. it, though. No, nah, bro. To me. I need to hear something else. Listen to me, though. <laughs> you pull up in that, and how they get a truck. Oh, mm. We going to go to a nice restaurant. I got friends at a restaurant. You go to Atlanta, low country. Faze on. Hey, how do you know? Faze got them. We got your bill. You got my bill? Just leave a tip. Are you sure? We done had a $400 meal for 50 bucks. Now, did she have fun? Yes. She, she, she met people. She got some, a little insight as to who I am, but not really, a little. And we just spend no money. Man, ain't that amazing how when you have money, people give you free stuff, and when you don't have money, they won't give you nothing. They kick you, get the hell out of here. You got to pay to get in the club when you don't have money, but when you have money, you get in free. <laughs> And you can have as many of your friends come in with you for free. Listen, G. Garvin is, you know, I use that because it's different places. 
You go to, you know, you've been all around. You place you go in Chicago. Oh, man, you, man, come here, man. Don't worry about that. It's, it's because you done been there before and you done took care of everybody. Hey, you done been to a place before, paid everybody's bill and left and didn't say nothing. Right? Yeah. It's karma. It going to come back. Don't tell that parent. I like to drive cross country. My mother and I driving a big truck across the country. I, was, I just got the truck. I'm like, oh, we, we driving this. We're going to a funeral. But we having a ball. We get to Arkansas. There's a fish place. My mom's like, I'm hungry. I was like, okay, I don't, we don't want no McDonald's. We didn't kill McDonald's. There's a fish place, a soul food restaurant. Not even a soul food restaurant. Just fish. It says fried fish. It looks clean. It looks like my mother can go in there. We go down there. So we sit down and we're eating. And me and my mother are talking about, we're laughing. It's about seven, eight people in there. We laughing. We say, oh, this fish is so good. Oh, this is good. I get ready to pay. Someone says, it's okay. The couple that was over there um, paid for you. They heard you guys laughing and, and thought it was great. And then I was like, wow, I've done that before. But th this mm -hmm. little town, they did that. It just, it just goes around. You see what I'm saying? I want the black community to quit thinking you got to show money and all this, put money on your ear. No, you got to put money in our families. Put money where it's going to grow. You know what I'm saying? And that might not be, uh, I, you got to, everybody ain't going to be a billionaire. But you can take care of your family with little money. Because you know, there's millions of houses. Jay-Z don't live in all them houses. The average person can have a good life. A house is just, I, you know, uh, what about my investments? Bruh. Take care of your family. Live your life. We don't have to, you don't have to. Rich is is really, I don't know where that came from because uh, my my father and mother hustled when they were growing, when they was coming up. When we was a kid, my father wanted something. He went and got it. Um, <laughs> he bought a Jaguar in 1978, an XJ6. Got two tanks, white with red interior. It's the coldest thing. Back then, Rolls Royce used to make Jaguar. <clears throat> Everywhere we go, people saw that car. Hey, you guys are the ones with that white Jaguar? Had the love on the tag. But my father would never drive that car to work. I said, Dad, why you going to drive the Jag to work? He said, I don't want them crackers to know how much that money they pay. <laughs> <laughs> It makes sense. I see you sound crazy. They know how much money they pay. You said, yeah. But if they see it, that's another thing. And that's what happened with us. We don't have to. I don't know where these women think they ought to get this money from. Instagram? That's the dumbest Instagram, thing. Instagram, say, man. And, and speaking of Instagram. Mm. Man, why you be messing with people on Instagram all the time, oh, man? Why you why you be going in on people just, just all the time, bullet. man? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm like, damn big one, man. <laughs> Say, man, damn. <laughs> damn, I thought they said cut. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I don't really I, I just be sometimes I just be going like, man, what is this? What is this person talking about, man? I mean, what what is this? What? It just the, the things on there. All these people with money advice. Like you don't know. You don't know. You don't ever think that you're gonna miss out on some opportunities because of your opinion, bro. You know how many opportunities I was missed out on because of uh, <laughs> Bill Cosby. Yeah. But guess what? It's always another person. Hey, face on. We got this TV show for you. Woo, woo, woo. Hey, what do you think? Let's go. It's like. The great Teddy Pendergraft said, you can't hide from yourself. Everywhere you go, there you are. And that's what it is. I'm me. If mm -hmm. I was anybody else, it, 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 it wouldn't work. It, it, would, it would be like living in a claustrophobic body. 
It's a lie. You know, yeah. It's a lie. I'm yeah. Like, and I really, I only comment on stuff that don't make sense to me. Like, I know for a fact that Monique can do a hell of a good job doing some stand-up. I know for a fact. I used to watch her before she got a TV show, all that stuff. She was hilarious. They was writing the, I was doing Parenthood, and they were thinking about me going on to it. And I was like, I want her to play my wife. And um, she would start doing um, the show she was doing. Well, incidentally, the girl, Countess Vaughn, we did a show together with Bernie Mac called uh, Gracie's, Gracie's, what was it called? Bernie Mac did a show. His first pilot was him, um, myself, um, Angela Means, and um, Claude Brooks, and uh, Richard, um, I forgot, what's Richard's last name? Really good actor. Anyway, we had a great time. Um, that's when I met first met um, Candid, uh, Vaughn, the girl. So I've been watching her. So when she hooked up with um, Monique, I was like, oh, yeah, I can see that. But now everything is, if you say something against me, you're saying it against the black woman. You know who good at that? Who? Malika Andrews. Oh, man. Man, she was out. She always talking about, well, black woman, the black woman. Like, she uses the black woman as she weaponizes the term black woman to to help support any argument that she has yes. to try to make you stand down yes. and to drown you out. Yes. Yeah, man, she'd be like the yes. black woman. No, no, it's just you. <laughs> it ain't the black woman. It ain't black woman. It's you. You know? Yes. <laughs> or, or it's that one individual woman who got that thing, whatever she got going on, yes. it's her. Yes. It ain't every black woman. Yes. You know, it's her. And that's what I'm... They've turned the black woman into another race. The black man and the black woman are separate. Hmm. Two different Whoa. races. Two different races. Yeah, we got to kill that shit, bro. Because we, we, what... we, we... Look, bro, we have survived many battles. We've won many wars. One war we cannot survive is a gender war. Black men and black women, specifically, we're not going to make it without each other. No. It, it's impossible. It's totally impossible. I don't give a fuck who you think like your ass more. Do you think they, they ain't going to like you more than your own people. This is me. Do you think it's a coincidence that around the Me Too movement, they have all these women working in sports. Hmm. Well, I, I really don't think anything is a coincidence, man, when it comes to uh, media and government. Well, that's I, what I'm everything saying. Like, is everything is calculated. Everything is by design. Are you telling me? Okay. And her and her rise was meteoric. I, she came out of nowhere. Like that's what I'm saying. I tell you, just she. <clears throat> she looks good. She got a job. I'm like, did she used to play basketball? Did she used to play volleyball? Where's she from? Journalism? Journalism? Yeah, man. Come on, knock she, that off. Somebody, that, somebody, somebody heard of her. But it's like you said, it's a setup. I'm like, wait a minute. So now you can't look at women, but you're going to put women on the place that every man look at. Hmm. They got dresses up to here, the legs all shiny. Huh. I don't care about the score. Huh. Objectify me, but don't don't objectify <laughs> right. me. Right. No. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna sit here with my um my, my titties out, but don't look at them. I'm a man. That's the first thing I'm gonna look at. That's the first thing I'm gonna look at. Like, oh, 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 I guess I'm LeBron scored. God damn, she fine. I just stopped looking at it. 
I mm. go back to the old shit, newspaper. Because I now I'm I'm being a man. We're very simple. We like chicken and pussy. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> We're very simple. I never. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple. Somebody gonna take that. You better do something with that. Chicken and pussy. That's a new <laughs> Listen. That's a stand up. I don't know. That's something. Listen that's to something. Me. Listen to me. That's what it is. We're very simple. We don't have any guidelines and all. You know, it's like I was like, why are, I've never heard any other race fight. I never heard of um you you gonna respect the Chinese women. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard that? Nah. Chinese women are disrespected. The Oriental women are disrespected. And you never hear white women collectively. Not not you don't you, you that, that's not a movement of white women out there saying, the white man this, the white man this, and we know what white men have been guilty of doing but right. they, but they're not calling out the white man and saying we need to separate or we need to do our own thing or we're better without them or blah 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 they're not doing any of that no but see because the family is the nucleus the family is the nucleus no matter what we're, we're, we're taking we're taking our cues and our life advice from people who don't like us mm. from people who have bad intentions. So we're sitting here reading all these dumbass magazines and 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 articles and listening to these dumbass shows and don't even understand that it's all propaganda. That the name of the game is to separate Se us, separate us, separate us, and we cannot survive no. separated. Listen to me. I'm pretty sure that can bring me the type top fifty rappers list. Right? Have you ever heard of a top fifty rock and roll list? Man, you know what's crazy? <laughs> Do you know what's crazy? I just interviewed Aaron Foster, and he brought up that same point. He said, you know, there's, there's no, you know, you don't hear about these, uh, you know, top 50 this list or top 50. It's only within our culture we have these things Fighting. about, yeah. There's, you can't fight for you know, art. Art is no top five. There's top no top, top. It's, subject, it's subjective. It's all subjective. Yeah. You never see uh, Picasso. Who's top five, y'all? Picasso the shit this week. <laughs> <laughs> see how silly it sounds, right? And then, you know what I... You Jack know, Pollock. Oh, you know man, what, that, this is a bull. We ain't on that Jack Pollock. You, you, know, you know another thing that, that I see out there, a lot of these memes that say one has got to go. They have a list of uh, five, six... Comedians, one has got to go. Right, and and but they don't even understand. Oh, it, people think it's just, oh, it's just fun and games. We just have fun. No, it, it's further separating us. It's creating division. It's pro programming. It's, it's programming. Yeah, one has got to go for what? Right. I. You know what I listen when I drive across the country. You know what I listen to? Everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything. There's, there's a white guy named David Allen Coe. <coughs> It's country singer. He's supposed to be racist. But he has a view. I get it. It ain't my view. But I can hear his story. And I know it's real. To him. You know what I'm saying? It's just art. And art is subjective. Listen. <laughs> I say... If I say... Stevie Wonder is the dopest writer of all time. So you must be crazy. 
You wouldn't get no argument from me. I, listen. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody gonna say, yeah, what about right. Smokey? Yeah. Smokey dope too. I ain't talking about Smokey from the mirror. <laughs> I'm talking about Smokey from Lounge Street. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's subjective. Yeah. They asked me who's my top favorite. I said, I listen to all everybody. Yeah. Everybody. They all brilliant. But don't it boil down to what you really listen to the most or what you watch, who you watch the most? How you feel? Because that's, that, that's what's going to be your top five, your top ten. It doesn't mean that other people, the other guys are, are better than them or are they're better than these other guys or whatever. It's just that your personal taste, this is what you listen to or this is what you watch the most. Those people are trying to start a war. To put Jay-Z on a pile of brilliant rappers is ridiculous. To me, because I can tell you some stuff from Melly Mel that's cold blooded. Mm-hmm. The child was born with no state of mind. Shouts out to Melly Mel. Blind to the ways of mankind. God is smiling on you, but he's frowning too. Because only, only God, God knows what you go man. through. Yeah, man. You'll grow in a ghetto living secret rate. And you'll let me say your eyes are saying a song of deep hate. Do you know how deep that is? It's almost like saying, what the Popeye stop. What's the left in the Popeye? Stop being quick. <laughs> I messed the line up. <clears throat> but these are, this is brilliant. We came up with this. Do you understand that? Nobody told you to sit down. Nobody told you to go get some two turntables and do this. Remember that was called stupid. What are they doing? What are they doing? That's there's no patent on scratching. They took a turntable and made a sound, and that's all music is—is is a sound. It's like a bongo. Mm-hmm. So they turn turntables into a bongo. But do bong. That shit is brilliant. I'm going to take a disco mixer, mixer and fade. Add a fader. Because remember, faders wasn't part of the mixers. It was a big knob. They was mixing disco. Do, 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 do. Burn in. They added a fader, and that's what they had. They had to add the fader just to get the scratches out. That came from us. Nobody can't judge that. Because you didn't create it. You know what I'm saying? I get you. Me and my partner was arguing. Jay Reed. We talk about Chuck Brown and Trouble Funk and go-go music. And there's another go-go music called Backyard Music where they just did, you know, they kind of do covers of songs. But it's like go-go music has been a part of rap since day one. You've heard Pump Pump It Up, um, I'm Chillin', um, it's a bunch of songs because you got before it was the, the the beatbox. It was a band had to play, boom, 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 boom. boom. It was a bass line in the down. In the, mm-hmm. So, and it ain't been fifty years to take that one. That's wrong. Somebody can't count. I was born in 68. So when <coughs> rap came in, really. Well, it depends on who they're crediting for. for who, Gil Scott Heron? At the beginning. Gil Scott was there, but you know who else was there? Um, Watts Poet. 
that's they they were right there at the same time. They actually started at the same time. Yeah. Watch Boys just kind of like uh Yeah, but they, what was that know, what? That's so that's what 69. But that what but would you call that rap before, though? I hate poetry. I hate poetry. It did have some I heard some stuff that had some rap elements to it just without a beat. I I like uh Whitey's on the Moon. That's kind of like uh Rap, you remember that one? It had music, but didn't have a beat. <clears throat> it didn't have no, you know, right? It had a, and it wasn't rhythmy. Yeah, rap is specific. Bam, bam. It's 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 always been a sample. <laughs> it's always started as a sample. What's the first biggest rap song? Rappers delight. There you go. What, what's the song it came from? Um, don't tell me. Um, uh oh, uh oh, the clock says, <laughs> Willie, I forgot, man. All right, what, good what, times, what, good times, yeah. These are the good times, yeah, yeah, right. They all were, that's all it was, yeah, that's all it was. It's all it's ever been is a sample. Taking a, a part of the, the, the break, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> but you doing that shit like you used to DJ. I did, I was. <laughs> you were? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you, <laughs> I was like, hold on. Oh, I still got you my got that now. <laughs> oh, no. I was Kid Flash. Now, when did you DJ? Um, shit, from 80, because I go back and forth to New York, go over to the Bronx, and I'm sitting there helping. You was getting paid to DJ? No. No, I didn't get paid to DJ till I was, until I didn't want to DJ. <laughs> until um, uh, I was getting paid to DJ. We had a crew. I would go to the Bronx and help um, Grandmaster Flash take. Um, they would do these parties out in the basketball court or on the Bronx. And if you help take the the crate, you can watch. Not for too long though, because <laughs> he had peelings off, and it was it was crazy. It was to look at a mastermind build all this stuff. Um, they would do parties out, you know. Uh, it's outside anywhere for some, you know. Block. Who's di- who's doing these parties? Just the community. Flash. There was so many DJs back then, and this is after. Um, uh, Cool Hurt. Like I never met Cool Hurt. I never. I, but I. You went uh, with Grandmaster Flash. Yeah, I got pictures of us. Um, <laughs> I got pictures of us. What? Yeah, yeah. I one of his sets. Just and I'm like, I mean, it was it was bananas. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm about to tell her, uh, whip a whip. Me, Whip a Whip, Grandmaster Class, Grandmaster Cass was roommates. And, wow. Yeah. And um, there's this thing in L.A. called Water in the Bush. Uh, oh, man. We said, you and Grandmaster Cass yes. were roommates. Yeah. Where? In, Ho- in Hollywood. In Hollywood. Yeah. Me, Grandmaster Cass, Whip a Whip. Dada Rock came out for a little bit and went back. Dada Rock went back, and um, Aladdin, Aladdin had the Aladdin had the apartment next door. How did y'all end up roommates? San Diego, uh, we be in um, uh, Balboa Park and uh, Chiba. <laughs> uh, you know, smoking Chiba, walking around with music, and just you know. Um, they used to call it New York Day on Sundays. Um, Slim Mac, um, San Diego, and all the B-Boys, and, you know, they would come together, and, you know. Um, at some point, uh, Whip and Whip was in the Navy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is after y'all were roommates? This is before. Oh, okay. This is before, yeah. 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 So, look. Meteor Man, mm-hmm. Bebe's Kids, mm-hmm. 
Friday. Mm-hmm. You had uh, Parent Trap. Parenthood. Yeah, parent, Parenthood. Mm-hmm. Baps. Baps, yeah. This is where you and uh, Halle Berry started dating. <laughs> well, you know what's so funny? <laughs> You and Halle was dating, right? Ah! <laughs> <clears throat> Almost. I was so. Halle Berry is so nice. I mean, so nice. And what happened was Robert Child said, Hey, man, I'm about to do this movie. Uh, I want you to do this movie with me. Halle Berry. I said, like, Halle Berry? I said, Let me read the script. So I read the script. Shit was cool. And I, I found out Holly Beers is getting paid a million dollars. And I was like, well, how much are you going to pay me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, probably about 40000 40000 Well, they can find somebody else. This was after Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, are you feeling yourself at this time? I'm ha- I'm content. And I have I'm I'm working on a show with him, and I think I'm making about fifteen twenty thousand a, a week. Don't don't quote <laughs> um, a week on the TV show. It's like our second second or third. It's our third year, and um, I'm I'm happy. I'm driving my Monte Carlo MC with Dayton's on it. I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm stacking. I'm like, yeah. Me and Chris Tucker doing little tour dates. I'm like, nah, you know. So, that's when I came here with Rashawn. <laughs> I was tripping over the women. Um, Halle Berry. Yeah, so, when you proposed. <laughs> So Robert Talbot tells me, nah, they ain't gonna pay you that much. I'm like, well, they can get somebody else. They gotta come off some paper. Cause remember, we didn't get paid during Friday. So I'm like, they gotta, they gotta, they gotta come to somebody else. And Robert said, come on, man, stop playing. So I found the girl that played Holly's best friend. I was at a play with Angela Means had a play. And I found her. And I was like, oh man, this girl is amazing. Oh, she's amazing, Natalie. She passed, rest in peace. She was oh, she was so amazing. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, I said, um, "You're amazing." She said, "Oh, thank you, Faze. I thank you." So I called Robert Townsend. Said, hey, man, this girl, she's she's amazing. You should meet her. He says, "What?" You? I says, "I said, should I bring her to the um, set." I was supposed to bring to the set. He took too long. He said, man, just have her go to your house. <laughs> so I'm telling her, this is my water, right? I can't have water. Mm-hmm. So she comes over to my um, house. She got phase on now. This ain't one of them Hollywood. I said, girl, nobody will fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, but just in case, I got a couch. <laughs> right? She was like, I was like, <laughs> And she just started like, well, you know, because I liked her her cousin, actually. Her cousin was fine. But Natalie was just pure talent. I was like, nobody would fuck you. Uh, Robert Towns want to meet you over here, but it's taking too long to meet, you know. Robert Towns ain't coming over here. Robert. Robert. Robert gives her a couple Things to do. Yes. How much I do this? And she killing it. Killing it. Robert said, oh my God. This girl's amazing. He calls the producers. You got to meet her. She gets the job the next day. We're, we're going somewhere. It's Holly, me, Robert, his wife, he's getting awarded some shit the next day, and I'm, you know, I'm fly back then too. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, you know, what I'm saying I got my wear my little suits and <laughs> and, it's a, and and Holly Bear is so nice, and I'm telling you, she's 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 when I say when woman knows you you, you get this pussy but just fuck it up, 
<coughs> I'm like, if she comes to me, act like I'll see her. What's up? Hey, what's up? Hi, Faison. Hey, what's up, girl? Um, hey, man, what you gonna do tomorrow? I'm having some bullshit conversation and ignoring her. She, she, you know, she's like, mm. was you conscious that that that's what you were doing? Yes. Okay, so you thought you was doing some fly shit. I I have nothing to say to her. <laughs> <laughs> she's so beautiful and she's so nice, right? <laughs> And um, I'm like, I hope she don't ask me about this dumb, this movie. I'm not doing this movie. She getting paid a million dollars. That's all I was thinking too. Like, <laughs> she getting paid a million dollars. This motherfucker's better come. Up. I was like, so she's like, oh, I face on I am so okay. Um, and we sat down at the table, right? <clears throat> she's here, and I'm here, and I turn my back like this. I turn my back. Holly Berry's right here, and I'm talking in there. Over there, you know, uh, Robert's wife at the time, and face on, blah, 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 blah. And Hallie's, ha, ha, ha. I don't do the movie because they're not paying me. And Robert said, This could end your career. I said, Well, I guess it's going to end my career. I still got a job with you. And face on, stop playing. I said, um, How much you want? I said, At least 500000 He says, No. They're not going to give you that. So I'm going to put these people on it. <laughs> Robert Townsend. Are we partners? Right? So I'm going to put these people on the phone and you tell them you're going to do the movie. All right. Face on, you going to do the movie? Yeah. How much? A million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the phone talking to the people. <laughs> you told them a million. And what's their direct response? Ah, <coughs> uh, we'll get back with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap. Rob, what the fuck is wrong with you? So, they had been shooting the movie, and I went down to the set, and this beautiful woman threw a shoot at P. <laughs> Pierre threw, Pierre stepped on Holly's foot or something. He, uh, he kept stepping on her foot. They were dancing something. She was like, and she took that shoe off so goddamn it. Pipe motherfucker, what's wrong with you? Halle Berry hit Pierre with a shoe? With a shoe. <laughs> so, like fast. Now, why the hell I haven't heard Pierre tell this story before? <laughs> oh, he probably, <laughs> I was there. <laughs> because. Where did the shoe <clears throat> land? <clears throat> it hit him. In the head? Yeah, in the back. In the back. She just, <laughs> Pierre, pow! I'm like, God <laughs> damn. She got some spunk. So, the reason why I had to do it because Robert was beefing with me. We were beefing. And, I, and, and the beef was, listen, um, he was suggesting, he was suggesting to the networks that they, Switch me out. It's, they're not we doing that because I told him I'm not doing a movie for that. But it was a whole different project. He was the producer of this project. <coughs> and, um, Dennis Rensler and um, oh, I can't believe the other producer. It's like Faze ain't going nowhere. So Dennis calls me one morning. He goes, Faze, can we have breakfast? You know when white men take you to breakfast is serious. <laughs> well, at least you know it's about some money. Because no, no, normally, it, they take you to dinner if they're going to shut it down. <laughs> Think about what I just said. Yes, yes. <laughs> if you don't just get the cold call like, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Go to dinner. Hey, yeah, yeah. You know, hey, listen. But, but breakfast is a good start. So we have breakfast. Phase on. Can I be honest with you? Is there any way you can do this movie with Holly Berry? You know? I said, they would. He says, Robert's having a hard time on it. He's The, the girl, Troy Bear, took her name off of it. it was, Robert is, is bleeding over to the set, to the TV shit. Now, they're having, you know, like I said, they want, Robert wants me off the show. 
<coughs> Can't put me on the show. The head of the network loves me. He's like, it's not going nowhere. Fuck Robert. There's a so Robert wanted to take you off the TV show that y'all were already doing. Yes. That you were already three years, uh, two seasons into. Well yes. Into, yes. Going into the third season. There's a famous Jet cover magazine. And you know, my mother liked the Jet. That's the you know, Being on Jet back then was... Don't tell me they did the cover without you. Yes. Oh, man. Yes. And you, you thinking, you, Robert's your boy. This is my dog. Yeah. We kick it. I help him put people in movies and everything. Right. So the first thing my mama said was, she said, why you ain't on the cover? If you look up Jet Magazine and Parenthood, I'm not on the cover. And the head of um, Warner Brothers... <coughs> Fucking why is the on the cover? So they ordered another People magazine spread with me playing pool and Robert. I said, okay, cool. But that Jet magazine, he says, don't worry about it. You playing pool with Robert? Yeah, this is a People magazine. But that Jet magazine did it. It broke the trust. Jet. <coughs> yes. So I know where you're going to. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> See you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I see you going, huh? So, huh? So, so, um, I was hurt by it because I had to pass it every day. On one, you, know, you ever go to Warner Brothers? Mm-hmm. And there's a big, long, big um pictures. Of the shows, mm-hmm. I wasn't on there. Yeah, on the walls. I'm like, yeah. So every day I had to pass that. Come to my house. Mm-hmm. Why aren't you? Shut the fuck up. I said walls, but on the outside of the. Uh, yes. The, yeah. Go ahead. On Bar Hammer. Mm-hmm. So. Dennis calls me and says, man, can you please. You know, Robert's talking about kicking off the network, and that ain't gonna happen. We'll kick him off first. That's what they, you know, I was like, yeah. I said, my picture's not on the thing. What the fuck? This is like, don't worry about that phase, huh? <coughs> the woman that was producing, producing TV shows, beautiful, um, Loretta Jones. Loretta Jones was, um, the producer, and she was she you know she ran BT and all that stuff. She was she was like my sister. I called Aretha. Said Aretha, what do you got that I can do on that movie that's some smooth? Because I'm supposed to be uh, what AJ did. I'm the one. The, the one to hire AJ. Um, it's supposed to be me and Pierre. Pierre was going with Holly, and I was going with, with so I asked. Um, the reason, what what can I do? So Robert did a three sixty. Hey, you can play this guy who's trying to talk to these girls. All right, and that's how I ended up in the movie. What they pay you? I don't even think I got paid. Nothing. Is that crazy? Nothing. 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 <coughs> I just did it. Just so. The other job, which is my main gig, can be smooth. You see what I'm saying? So, and um, so it created so much turbulence. Cause you guys said, I'm, I'm with this mother. We, we go, we smoke weed, we talk shit. Blah, blah, blah. You know, um, there's a friend of mine who produces all the Oscars and BT shows. The, the show you talked about, he produced, Jesse Collins. He got his start by me going, uh, give him a job on the show, on Parenthood, and Aretha hiring him, and 
you know, and him just working hard. He was he was on the radio. <clears throat> I'm I'm his baby. I'm, I'm I'm the godfather to his kids. Um, but he got that job by me telling Robert, "Hey, hire Jesse." Blah 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 blah. Um, but a lot of times in this business, you have to cower down to protect your meat. It's a political play. Does that make sense? It's like, okay, I, I, I need to say this hand. Um, even if they, uh, Robert, if they kick Robert off the show, that's going to be terrible. If the, if they bring in somebody, Robert has a, a car accident. It's still going to look. I mean, this is a great life. I go to work at eight. I'm out at five. They pay me. I'm riding my low rider to work. I'm like, I'm. This is great. <clears throat> but sometimes. It's the thing, never outshine the master. And I learned that story then. It's like, never outshine the master. And I'm thinking, we all in this. <laughs> You're looking at him like he's your equal. He's my boss. That's my boy. It's like, <laughs> we're all together. But you're not. And... <clears throat> It's a pecking order. And you probably was looking at looking at Halle Berry the same way. Like, you know, we're we the same thing. Shit, I got, she got credentials. I got credentials. You know, like, we we, we, we I, in the show together, man. You know, I deserve a million dollars, too. Yeah. I'll I was take saying, a half a million, but I deserve a million. <laughs> I'm in a hit movie. I'm blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. I'm no. a big worm. <laughs> but her, I, I really took it as like, damn, she. And I had to make a, you know, a stance of, uh, you know, people respect money. But um, yeah, she was, she was, she was amazing. I mean, she smelled. You know, <laughs> I was like, damn, she smelled good. And she just would laugh. I think if I really would have, you know what I'm saying? I could have, if my, if I phase on, if I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? If I was like, in, in. Kill him old, I could have, you know. <laughs> like, come on, Holly, shut up, shut up, shut up. You think it's too late to shoot a shot now? <laughs> I'm going to tell you something funny. If certain women you're around, I can't get it together, man. Prince had a big party at his house through the Oscars. It, one was the Oscars, then he had another party. He had to be invited, like, he had to know. I was like, damn, Prince knows who I am. So I take my best buddy, me and Dennis, and um, Courtney. We go up there, and it's a party at that. Where's the party? In the hills? In Beverly Hills, like yeah. down the street from Eddie Murphy House yeah. and all that. You know, the guy who created, it was the guy who created Sprint, our own Sprint house, and he was renting it. And this was total, that, that. It was crazy. Prince is performing, he's performing outside. Like it's, like it's 30,000 people. Listen. Halle Berry walks up right here. <gasps> Purple Ray. Purple Ray. <laughs> 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 she acknowledged me and like <laughs> purple ray <laughs> and I'm like I just couldn't get it she's yeah she's just, her Sally um, Richardson you know what that is right mm -hmm. awesome Awesome. <laughs> so, when it's time mm -hmm. for you to go and you ain't got no more, what do you want people to think of Faison Love? 
Uh, as a teacher, or I try to help people by teaching. Um, because what I say to them hurt, breaks them down. This is a girl I have on the road with us, and she's one of these TikTok comedians. I was like, listen to me, and um, she got into it with another comedian, and I understood her his point. <clears throat> um, because we're at the table eating and it's us. When we get together on the road, you know it's like when you, uh, you, Ice Cube, uh, whoever, whoever, y'all was like, okay, oh, we all sit down and eat, okay. You in the middle of whatever and it's just you guys. It's the circle. You guys sitting down to eat. People asking for autographs, okay, okay. I, I I don't mind stopping and whatever because I'm out in the public. I'm a part of the ecosystem. So I feel I have to take a picture because even if I'm about, I'm out. They done bought this. They done went to this. They done took you know. But everybody in the circles knows don't take no camera out and start filming shit. And um, so TikTok chick took the camera out. There you go. <laughs> I call her TikTok. Yeah. TikTok takes it out and just starts. <clears throat> and the brother says, "Hey, hey, hey! It's a big light on it. She got the light on it. Mm-hmm. Everybody can see. I'm just filming the food." He says, "Yeah, but now we we good. Don't don't do that. Don't don't do that." <laughs> I'm just filming the food and I see him go bitch I'm standing by my food I'm about to eat I'm, I'm, he didn't say this he was just like saying you're not just filming the food we're all here about to eat and you know we, we the crew this is us. It's us. I'm just filming for well, fucking the end. I'm the lead. Give me the kid. I'm like, what are you doing? That's like being at a table. You don't really know this man here. You don't know what uh, what he. Done, you know. You don't know. And a lot of people don't understand. <clears throat> That's how suckers get got with this camera. Oh, they over there eating. They pray now. But she had to, had to live the life as a celebrity or somebody, a target on their back. So all she knows is, I'm trying to get my viewers up. Get them up first. But th- this food ain't going to be no. It ain't like people ain't seen food on the thing before. She's mad at him. I don't let nobody talk. And I say, and I remember him talking. It wasn't no bitch take that camera because I I know some people would have. I said, listen, I know some people who went hard. He didn't go hard. You went hard by saying, <clears throat> it's just food. That's not the point. We all sitting down, just trying to eat and trying to. We just flew in. We, we gathered. You know what I'm saying? So she's still arguing this matter. We. I saw she came to the show in Colorado. I can't believe you let him talk to me like that. He didn't say nothing wrong. They don't want to be taught the correct way to do it. There's a right time. Have you ever been with a bunch of fellas? I'll put it like this. How many times have you you took a picture out with all the people you know? I'm like, damn, why didn't we think we had a camera into all the people you've been with? All the stages you've been on. 
No one took a picture? Or they did? Or you were like, okay, let's take the picture and get out of here. This picture shit... <clears throat> How about this one? Andy Warhol said everybody in the future be famous. Hmm. But how about this one? Content is no longer king. You understand what I'm saying with that? What's king? It's going to be live performances. Because you got how many people in the world? They say eight billion. They all got a camera. Who the hell's gonna sit down and watch a movie? There's people digging in their ass, jumping off buildings, getting <laughs> smacked. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been on somebody's house and all they did is do this? Yeah. Not one movie. This thing costs two seconds to do. Sitting at dinner. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Content was king when you had something to say. It was the thing that go viral is that's that's what's king. You said it, bam, boom, it's out there wrong. But you gotta have something to say with it. Well, you got a lot to say, man. And, Ain't that some shit? And thank God, bro. <laughs> thank God because, man, you you keep the jokes coming, man. You keep not just jokes, though, but you also keep the conversation going. You know, like you you spark a lot of uh, of, of of interest. Uh, it, damn near every time you post something, man. You, <laughs> You just be starting shit all the time. But you know what? I, I like people who start mm -hmm. shit in a good way. Like, you, <laughs> you know, some, sometimes when you post stuff, you're like, man, what's going on? What's going on with Faze? What, 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 man, I ain't, man, I ain't say that, man. Why, why you do that, you know? But, hey, man, you know, like you say, man, you know, that's who you are. And, and you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be, you know, shit. It wouldn't be a good life for you if you was any, any, anything else or anybody else. I can't. <clears throat> I don't try to hurt nobody. I just tell her this is what it is. This girl told me this. <laughs> Nikki <laughs> told me this. Where's the lie? Find the lie in what I'm saying. Where's the lie? Where's the lie? Huh. The lie. Where's the lie? I said Monique special was boo boo. Where's the lie? I said I rated at a zero. You said I wouldn't rate it that low, but it's gonna be low. <laughs> I did think you know, and I I I don't like Monique. I love Monique, mm -hmm. and I, I love her courage. I love her tenacity, but I do I know she can do better than that. That's all. I know, I know, and I was really looking forward to her doing better than that. Because I was like, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's show these motherfuckers. I, I was like, Birdman running. Like, oh, man. Mo, they didn't let Monique back in. It's on, baby. And boom. And that was, a, that was a lie, too. Yeah. You're a black performer. You've been black ball since day one. What do you mean? I was surprised they gave her that special though, because normally, like, if you come after a corporation, listen to me, you out of here. Listen to me. She, <laughs> that was the most gangster part of of it all. <laughs> she extorted them. <laughs> 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 That's where I was like, this is some gangster shit. She right got here. it done, man. She. Got I was it like, done. I, I've never ever heard of that before. Hey, man, I, I was I was really proud to see her back on the scene. Really proud to see her back on the scene. I think she'll learn from it. You know, she, I mean, pe people people have, you know, she's gotten some praise from it and there's been criticism. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like any artist, you know, you're going, you, you go, you, you take your bitter with your sweet and, you, you know, you don't let it go, you don't let it get, get to you too much because, you know, we, we're all, we're all moving insult targets, you know, like people, you know, you get a, you get a name, boy, you better be ready. You better have some tough skin because it's coming. It Listen, it's part of the fabric we are. But some people are just being mean. 
you know, like I said, people got mad at me because I was talking about Dave Chappelle. I've been around. Dave Chappelle's been around for years. <clears throat> I've been there when Martin Lawrence went on stage. I've been there when Robin Harris was on stage. I've been there when Damon Wayans was on stage. I, I've been with the baddest people. I didn't see him. <laughs> we had to be on stage. Because we only had a certain stage to do. Yeah, but I saw him. I saw I saw I saw the first time I saw Dave Chappelle perform live, I think it was the nineteen like like it was like late nineties. Mm-hmm. Mid mid to late nineties. Mm-hmm. Uh he he opened for Cedric New Year's Eve. I mm-hmm. can't remember what year that was. No, it was the mid nineties. He opened for Cedric in Oak in Oakland. Mm-hmm. Um and I mean murked it. I'm talking about murked it and I was like He's saying all of that shit, like, and he was saying he was talking that shit back then. Really? Yeah, man. I've never. I'm telling you. He had some. Ex Cedric. Ex Cedric. That's that's that's. Op- Ex Cedric. He opened for Cedric, that's... and I was like, ooh, like, yeah, man. He was talking that shit because I, I know I I like comics. Did you see him at the Birdland? I never seen him at Birdland. That's where we were. Yeah, but everybody wasn't that Berlin. I, you couldn't. Uh, <laughs> no, but no, no. They, they, they could have He could have murdered. They, they could have murdered. He, 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 he could, he could have done that, man. He could have done Berlin. Yeah, we had places like that all over the world. No, nah, he could. No, nah, they, they could have done Berlin. Bro. Him. He could have done Berlin. Certain people would not do Berlin. Berlin Comedy Act, Oakland. I mean, um, uh, where else it was? Chicago, Atlanta. We had Atlanta, the Atlanta um, comedy um, act. I mean, well, let me, you know what? Let me, let me say. Let me say this. Harlem. Let me say this. In defense of the great Dave Chappelle, my <laughs> homie. Okay, right, let, me, let me say this. And I'm not dissing them. Now, now let, me, let me say this about, let me say this about Berlin. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll give you that in the sense that, you know, you didn't see Dave, perhaps you didn't see Dave there because, you know, Dave ain't the confrontational type of dude that is going to stomach somebody in the audience talking shit and just like and going back and forth with somebody in the audience like that. He wants to get on stage do his bit and keep it moving. At Birdland, you got to be prepared to be derailed. Yes. You had to be prepared to fucking like really like put your whatever thoughts you thought, whatever jokes you thought you were going to tell. But see, those are the training. <laughs> the, those are the training grounds for us. Birdland. Did you ever go to the townhouse? I know you went to the town. You had to go to the uh, townhouse. Where, where was this? In Lamert Park. I mean, I'm in... Um, off of uh, La Tierra. No. no. Um, Rudolph Funhouse on Crenshaw. Maverick Flack. Birdland. Trust me. I, Birdland I, I was, was my there. spot. Yeah. I that, was there. That was my spot, man. They had We had a lot of spots like that because we couldn't do um, the white clubs like that. So that's why um, Guy Tory created um, F- Fat Tuesdays. <clears throat> so, fortunately, me, I could do the comic store and the improv because I started there. But I was like, man, these jokes, you know, when I when I first performed at the comedy act, I it was like, no, boo, take that shit somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> And Robin Harris was on my yeah, ass, was, too. That was that sink or ship. It, uh, a sink or swim. Is that the club, uh, Comedy Act, is that where Robin Harris held his residency? Because he was there for a while. He was killing it. Killing I it. I used to hear about it, but I I found out about it too late. But Killing it. I mean, yeah. everybody from the Magic Johnson, everybody was there. Mm. If you wanted to, I mean, if you wanted to see the top elite Black people, we're going there. Oh my God! 
First time I ever saw Shot Collins. Who? Shot Khan. Shot Khan. Oh my God. Was I, you on stage when you when you saw it? No, she walked in. I was like, Shot Khan. Because I know if you would have been on the stage, you'd have been Shot Khan. Shot Khan. Shot Khan. Shot Khan. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to say that, Shot man. Time. That 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 song is so iconic. And so are you, Faison Love, y'all family. Give it up for Faison Love, man. I appreciate you stopping by, man, man and chopping please. it up with me. You are one of the icons, man. One of the heroes of comedy, man, and much necessary, bro. Hey, you are necessary. I appreciate that, brother. Absolutely. So, um, what's going on, man? What you got coming up? Uh, I'm trying to get. Um, my brothers together. <laughs> she <a> good luck. <laughs> I hope you're talking about your siblings. Because, <laughs> brother. I can't even say it. Because I'm looking at you going, I know you go. <laughs> I mean, Pete, we need y'all. Yeah. I mean, we need y'all. We love y'all. And I know y'all are like brothers. I know it. I, I I got a sister now. I, I will I I can't stand. I can't stand. I'm like oh. I was gonna choke her at my father's funeral. I said I better not go because I'm gonna choke this bitch. Because everybody don't see the big picture. They people don't see, but we see y'all, and we look up to y'all. Y'all saying, y'all, pillars. You're, you're pillars. Y'all saying that? So don't think it's you against the world. Y'all pillars. Do you get that? You pillars. Pillars stand strong. Y'all been here long. This is your neighborhood. Am I right? No more talk. <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here.